Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about zero length strings, the allow zero length property, how a zero length string is different from a null value, how to set all of this up in your database, and most importantly, how to use it properly. Simon from Cleveland, Ohio, one of my Platinum members, says, I'm confused. What's the difference between a null value and a zero length string? Well, Simon, this is one of those questions that's easy to answer, but it's difficult to answer completely. And more importantly, it's difficult to implement correctly in your database. So let me give you some background and then I'll walk you through it. Before we get started, I just want to address that every time I put one of these videos together, I've been doing this for almost 30 years. But even I still go and Google what everyone else has to say about it. And while I was doing my research for this video, I found a bunch of misinformation out there from so-called self-proclaimed experts talking about zero length strings and you should never use them and null values are this and blah, blah. there's a lot of garbage out there, folks. So I'm gonna try and distill it down for you. The bottom line is don't believe everything you read on a Google search, whether it's access or computers in general or life in general. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy people out there that have the ability to publish information online, whether it's correct or not. So for today, at least, let me be your access fact checker because, yeah, this is what I do. Now, I will say that zero length strings probably aren't for beginners. Yes, setting them up is easy, but properly implementing them in your database does take a little knowledge, a little know-how of access. So while I do cover them briefly in my access beginner classes, knowing what they are and using them right are two different things. And even then, if you know how to use zero length strings properly, you have to teach all the users of your database how to use them right too. So that's another level of complexity. So if you're an absolute beginner to access, I wouldn't even watch the rest of this video. Don't worry about it. Just use null values. Don't even worry about zero length strings. Come back in a year or so when you've got some access under your belt and learn the difference. Now for the rest of you, as far as prerequisites go, I got a bunch of things I'm gonna do in this video. Some other videos I'll reference as I'm going. Like we're gonna use a little conditional formatting and stuff later. But for now, just make sure you watch this video first uh, what a null value is. What does null mean in Microsoft Access? I want you to know this first before we go into zero length strings. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between null and zero length strings. A null value means that this field contains no valid data. All right, the data is unknown. It hasn't been specified yet. You get this when you enter a new record, right? You start creating a new record. You type in the first name. At that point, last name is null. You haven't entered it yet. You don't know what it is, according to the computer. Okay, it's undefined. That's a null value. There's no data. Now, a zero length string is different because a zero length string contains a value. It has a value. You're saying, I know the value, and the value is none. This value does not exist. It's not that I don't know what it is. It doesn't exist. Now, zero length strings are also called empty strings. And I've seen them referred to as null string, which I hate that term. I don't use that myself. It's confusing, I know. There's a difference between a null and a null string. Don't use null string. If you see it somewhere else, that's what they're talking about. I like to use the term zero length string. In fact, the term empty also has a separate value in access, but we won't get into that now. <laughs> now, zero length strings are only available for text fields. Short text, long text, memo, right? or hyperlink fields, and I don't use hyperlink fields, so really short and long text fields. Now, what are some examples of fields where you know the value and the value is none? Well, the perfect example that I can think of is middle name. My grandfather, for example, did not have a middle name. His name was Benny Sperduti, and on his birth certificate and his army dog tags, it said none where the middle name goes. So in that case, that's a poorly designed database. <laughs> it was probably done on paper back in his day. But his middle name was not none. It was literally no middle name. So you wouldn't want to put a null value there because that indicates you just don't know what his middle name is. We didn't get it when we were surveying him, for example. But to have a zero length string, that would indicate that we know he has no middle name. 
Same thing with religion. You can have no religion. You know what their preference is. It's no religion. Title, right? For Let's say for a company, president, vice president, and so on. If you got a one-man band like me, no title. Yeah, I call myself president and CEO because I do have an LLC, but <laughs> you can have no title. No social security number. Okay, if you're putting in a database, someone might not be American, so they don't have one. Phone numbers. I don't have a home phone number. I got a couple of different work phone numbers. I don't have a fax number anymore, and I've got a cell phone number. So on a field where I'm asked to put in my fax number or my home phone number, I would put in a empty string, an empty string, right? Who still got fax numbers out there? I, I still cringe every time someone says, can you fax it over to me? I'm like, what are we living in 1996? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. And especially the medical industry, they still use faxes a lot. I don't know why, but they do. Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier, it's easy to set up your database to accept zero-length strings. The problem is it's difficult to implement it properly. To use zero-length string versus null, to display which one's a zero-length string versus null. Okay, so we're going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got a customer table where I've got first name and last name. Let's do my perfect example, which is middle name. I'm going to add a field right in here. I'm going to right-click, insert, and I'm going to type in middle name. And we're going to make that short text. Now, down here on the bottom, there's two properties. You've got required, and you've got allow zero length. All right, now, in older versions of Access, allow zero length was actually set to no. But I think sometime around Access 97, I want to say, they switch it to the default is yes. But they still don't really tell you what a zero length string is. And even in my beginner classes, I just kind of glance over them briefly. Because it's not really something that beginners have to worry about. Now, if you've taken my beginner level one class, you know that I almost never use the required property. I try not to make stuff required. Especially things like first name, last name, middle name, email, all that stuff. If you make it required and the user doesn't know what it is, maybe they didn't ask the customer, for example, they'll just type in garbage if they have to to save the record. So I always say that no data is better than bad data. Okay, you don't want to force someone to have to just type in a garbage email address or a garbage phone number. So don't make a field required unless you absolutely have to. Yeah, sure, something like order number could be required if you have to have that, but otherwise, try not to put it in. Now, there are certain fields like first name or last name where if you're typing in a customer database, you want, might want to make those required. That's up to you. I always like to leave them blank because you might have a customer come in. His name is Bill. You don't get his last name. Okay, fine. Or Mr. Jones. You don't want to prevent the user from having to not put the record in or put some garbage in. Okay, so there's really not much else we have to do here at the table level to make something allow zero length. So we're pretty much done here. Let's save that, close it. Now, right now, if you take a look at the customer table, all of the first names are null. They have no data, okay? And if you go down to a blank new record down here, all right, if you start typing in something down here, everything else in here is null as well. Null means we don't have any data yet. It hasn't been entered yet, okay? I'm going to hit escape a couple times. Okay, now, if I go to one of these customers here and I put something in here, like Tiberius, right, James Tiberius Kirk, now that middle name field has a value, okay? If I delete that, as soon as I delete that, now it goes back to null. When you delete a value from a text field, that will now register as null. Okay, let's take my grandpa, for example. Let's put in his first name, Benny. Yes, and that actually was his first name. It was Benny, not Benjamin. He wasn't short for anything. His name was Benny. No middle name. We'll come back to that in a second. And his last name was Spiriduti. Good Italian name. Okay. Now, how do I indicate that I know that Benny does not have a middle name? I want to make this a zero-length string. Well, to do that, you type in empty quotes. Quote, quote. Those are double quotes. Quote, quote, and press enter. Now, it looks exactly the same as a null field. That's one of the problems is you can't tell the difference by looking at them. Okay, and I'll show you in a few minutes how we can, in a form, we'll, we'll do a little formatting so I can show you how you can tell the difference. But just looking at it, this is one of the problems with zero-length strings. You got no idea that it's there. How do we tell it's there? Let's go over to a query for a minute. Let me close this. All right. Let's go create query design. Let's bring in my customer table. 
And let's bring in that middle name field. Okay. Now, again, if I run them, there they are. Let's actually let's put Jimmy Kirk's middle name in there so we can see James Tiberius Kirk. All right, I'll put mine in there too. Dennis. We've got some data. Benny's should be empty string, and the rest are all null. Okay. Now, if I run this, there you go. Now we could do tests to see if something is null or if it's an empty string. So right here in the next column over, I'm going to make a calculated field. I'm going to say is null and then open parentheses, middle name, just like that. And access is going to call that expression one. That's fine. Now, if I run this, there you go. You can see a true false value, zero or a negative one. Negative one is true, zero is false. And you can see that these three show up as not null. It can tell that that Benny's Perduti record has an empty string in there. And we can do the same thing to show the empty strings. I can come here, make another calculated field, and say middle name equals quote, quote, just like that. That's expression two. And now if I run it, now you can see that's the only one showing up as true. See? So access can tell the difference between null and zero length, even if you can't by looking at it. <laughs> okay, we got some tricks though, don't worry, we'll get there. One of the problems with null values is that null is not equal to anything, including itself. And you can test that by coming over here and saying null equals null like that. And that should bring up a value, but if you run it, it says it's null. If you include, it, it's not even equal to itself. It's, it returns a null value. Anything added to, divided by, anything involving null, even if it's an inequality, the result is null. It's funny null math. I got a whole separate video on null math. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Just like I also have a video for the is null function if you've never used that. Okay, that's the only way you can check for null. It's a special function that will return a true or false value based on whether whatever you send it is null. Okay, but for empty strings, you can check for empty strings with a simple inequality or a simple equals like that. Okay, this says if middle name is empty string, it'll return a true or false value, right? Okay, so enough of this query stuff. Most of the time you do data entry, it's with forms. So let's put that middle name on this form. Get rid of a bunch of stuff we don't need. Let's just get rid of all this stuff and this stuff. Okay, let's add middle name in the middle here. Let me get rid of that and buttons. We'll leave notes around for a minute. Okay, we're going to copy paste. This will be our middle name. And we'll change the control source and name of this guy over to middle name. Okay. Let's fix our tab order because that's one thing that annoys me a lot. We'll move middle name right up in there. Hit okay. And now we should be all set. All right, save that. Close it. Come on back. There we go. Dennis Rost, James Five Years Kirk, Benny, empty strings for duty. Now, how can I tell that that's an empty string and that's a null value? Well, the format property for a text field does have an optional second parameter, which allows you to display text in that field if there is no value. Okay, so you can put in here, I'll zoom in so you can see it. You can put in, oops, someone's beaming in. You can put in at and then a semicolon and then whatever text you want to have in here if there is no value, like none. Okay. And now access will translate to that, puts quotes around there, save it, close it, open it back up again. And then as you can see there, it puts none in there. But that doesn't differentiate between null and empty string. You just know there's no value. So that really doesn't help us. And yes, with some VB coding, you can put the is null value into that using a, an event, but that's a lot of work. I will show you how to do that in the extended cut for the members. But for the rest of you guys, it's actually a lot easier just to use a little conditional formatting. Let me show you. All right, so design view. Let's go back into here, get rid of this format. Okay, we're gonna use conditional formatting. We're gonna make this guy red if it's null. And we'll make it blue if it's just empty string. So the user will know the difference. Now the empty string is actually the easier one. So we can go to format, 
conditional formatting, new rule. And by the way, if you've never done conditional formatting before, I've got two videos for you to go watch. I'll put links down below. One is basic conditional formatting, and the second one is using an expression, which is what we're going to do next. All right, here we could say the value is equal to, and then right here, just put empty quotes. That indicates a zero length string, and we'll change this to, we'll make it like a light blue, like that. It's an empty string. Okay, hit apply, hit okay, and let's close it down and restart it. All right, we're good, we're good, and there's Benny's blue spruity. See that? That's an empty string. That one is null which is not the same thing. Now, you could just stop there if you want to. And you just teach your users that means that there's nothing in there. Okay. Now, how do you do null? Null is a little trickier because nothing equals null. So you can't use the... We'll have to add a new rule. You can't use the field value is. You can't put the word null in there. I've tried it. It doesn't work. But what you can do is say expression is... And again, I got a different video for this you can go watch. And right in here... You'll say is null and then middle name. Now you gotta be careful with this too, because sometimes access puts quotes around middle name. Let me see if it does it this time. We'll make this one red. Hit OK. Hit apply. And watch. Let's see. Save changes. Yes. Come back in. Oh, see, I bet you did it. Watch. I uh, I like to leave this mistake in here because this happens to me all the time. Yep, look at that. See that? See? I hate that. Axe, that's a bug. <laughs> All right. So you got to make sure. I know most of the time I say you don't need to put the brackets around stuff if you don't have spaces, but this is one of those instances where you do. And I'm leaving this in the video because it'll happen to you. Trust me. It happens to me all the time. Okay. Now hit OK. Make sure you got your brackets there. Now save it and close it and reopen it. And blue and red. See that? That one's null. Versus that one is an empty string. Okay. Now, unfortunately, yes, you do have to make that unique for each field that you want to show that in. So if you're going to copy that format to different fields, you got to change that function for each one. So, for example, if you wanted to do first name as well, you can use the format painter, right? And then paint over that one. But now you got to come in here and go to format and go to conditional formatting and change this. The first name, sorry, but you get it. There's really no way around it that I can. All right, so now both of those fields, if I delete Richard, will show up like that. Okay, if I put quote quote in there, you can see it's an empty string, which means I have no first name. Well, yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> One thing that a lot of people ask me is how do you switch from a zero length string back to null? Because you can't just delete that, there's nothing in there now. Right <laughs> now, you can make a button to do it, but the easiest way is just put something in there and then go back and delete it. Now it's null. Yeah, I know. Silly. Now, if you don't think your users are going to remember to blank it, like see if I put in my, my first name and then I go blank that one like that. If you don't think they're going to remember that, you could make them a button to do that with. It does involve a little tiny bit of VBA. If you've never done any VBA before, don't panic. I got a video you can go watch. I'll put a link down below. But you can just take a little button and put it right there. Cancel the wizard. All right, and put in here like the word none. Okay, make that nice small. Make this bigger. Make the font smaller if you want, right? Nine. All right, now we got a little button here for none. Okay, open up its properties. Go to the all tab. We'll set this to uh, no middle name button is the name of it. Right click, build event, that opens up our VBA editor. And in here, you'll just say middle name equals empty string, just like that. Okay, save it. Close the form. Open it back up again. All right, let's go to someone else and let's click on none. And there you go, it's that simple. And now you've indicated that has, that, that person has no middle name. Okay, but he does, so I'm gonna hit escape, put it back. <laughs> Okay, now, what use is this stuff? Well, let's say maybe you want to do a query and you want to say, okay, I want to see how many people have no middle name versus how many people I don't have middle names for. See the difference there? How many people do I know 
don't have a middle name versus how many people do I just not have middle names for? That's the difference between null and zero length string. And you can do that easily in a query. So you can go create, query design. We'll bring in that customer table. And I'm going to make an aggregate query. So turn on the totals there. If you don't know aggregate queries, i got a video for that. I'll put a link down below. Go watch that. All right. I'm going to bring in that middle name. And let's change that total there to count. Let's count those up. All right. Run it. And I get a three. But looking at the customer table, there's really only one in there that has a value. That's because count also includes zero length strings. So it's not always necessarily reliable. So keep that in mind. All right, now how do we add up the zero length strings? Well, let's go over here. And now I'm gonna say middle name equals empty string like that. And let's change expression one to ZLS, zero length string. So it's a little more meaningful. Okay, now if you change it to count, you get this, you get three. Okay, which isn't, again, isn't correct. What count is actually doing is it counts up the number of records. It doesn't care what the value is. But if we change this to sum, because, because false is a record, right? That's a value. So falses and trues will add up in a count. If you change it to sum, however, you'll get a negative number representing how many there are. Because true is negative one, false is zero. Count those, you'll get three with the count aggregate. But negative two means you've got two negative ones plus a zero. And we could just simply multiply that by negative one. Just put this whole thing times negative one, and it will give you the actual zero length string count. Okay. Same thing for counting up the null values. We could say uh, null v null values. You don't, want to, you don't want to use the word null there. That's a reserved word. And we'll say is null middle name times negative one, and then change this to sum. And there's your null value. So what's the easiest way to get a count of the total number of records you have in here? Because if you look at this, you got three of the count of middle names, which means you've got three actual middle name values, but two of those are empty values. That's, it's kind of confusing, I know. But forget this one. This is really kind of meaningless. If you want to get a, a count of how many actual middle names you have, you can do a count of all of the records and then just subtract these two things, okay? So you can say in here, uh, bring in a, a field that you know has a value, has to have a value all the time, like customer ID. All right, do a count of that. Okay, you get to 29 total records. 26 of those are nulls. Two of them are zero length strings. So you should have one actual middle name, which is Tiberius. And we can do that with a little math. Let's refer to customer ID as uh, num cust, for example. So we don't have to call it count of customer ID. So now when we run this, we get those three values, right? Number of customers, null value, zero length string. Now, unfortunately, it's not easy to put all of this in the same query. You could put it over here, but you can't refer to null V and ZLS because they haven't been calculated yet. But we could save this, just call it Q1. And then we can make another query off of that one. Create, query design, go to queries, bring in that Q1. Okay, bring in all this stuff if you want to. And then right here, you could say actual middle names is going to be number of customers minus null V minus DLS. And that will give you a count of how many actual middle names you have. <laughs> So as you can see, there's a bunch of steps to it. But if in your database you care about these things, right? if you're doing statistics or whatever, and you, you've got to know how many of whatever particular field you don't have data for versus how many you do have data for, but the data is none, then this is what you've got to do. And I'll save this one as Q2 for you gold members if you want to download that. I got both of those queries. If you're interested in learning more stuff like this, I cover a lot more about zero length strings and null in the extended cut for the members. First, I'm going to show you how to use the format property to display none, null, 
uh, zero length string, whatever you want to display in there and change the color if you've got a null value or a zero length string. We know how to use conditional formatting, and that's just fine. But if you want something a little more visible for your user, you can add that as well. You can use both at the same time. All right, but it requires a little bit of VBA code to be able to put an actual text there. Then we're going to talk about a problem with DLOOKUP. If you, if you use the DLOOKUP function at all, it doesn't handle zero length strings. It'll only return a null value. Okay, so I wrote my own function called DLOOKUP zero length string, which of course is free for the members. Then I'm going to show you how short and long text will actually handle zero length strings differently before you save the record. So that's interesting. Sometimes it'll return a null. Sometimes it'll return a zero length string. Depends on what you're doing. Then we're going to talk about some combinations between allow zero length and required, the required property. So if you have something that's required, but zero length strings are allowed, you're going to get something different than if it's not allowed. So I cover all the different combinations of those two properties together. And then not to make your head spin even more, there are two additional values you might have to know. One is called nothing, and one is called empty. A variable can be empty, which basically means you haven't assigned it a value yet. And that's for variables, not for fields. So you, what you do in VBA is different. A variable in VBA can be zero length string, null, empty, or nothing. <laughs> There's lots of different combinations. So we'll cover all that in the extended cut for the members. Again, remember, Silver Members and Up get access to all of my extended cut videos, and there's lots and lots of them, hundreds of them by now. And Gold Members can download all these crazy databases that I make in the Tech Help videos. And don't forget to watch the Null video if you haven't already. Here's some other videos I mentioned. I'll give you links to them. Watch my Null Math video. This is how I show what happens when you add null values to anything else. I've got a video for the NZ function. NZ is called null to zero, which basically if you have a function like DLOOKUP that returns a null value, this will convert it to zero or whatever else you want to convert it to so you don't get an error. This is one of my more popular videos, Invalid Use of Null. I get tons and tons of people asking me about this one. Mike Wolf over at No Longer Set has a great article about null and is null and is null and all kinds of other stuff, including NZ on his website. Check this out. I'll put a link down below. If you haven't used conditional formatting before, I got a video for that, as well as conditional formatting for null values using the expression that I used earlier. And finally, for more on aggregate queries, that's how we got that sum and count. I have an aggregate query video. You will find links that you can click on to all of these videos, plus more. I got those articles on Microsoft's website linked down below, too. Um, these are all free videos on my website. You can check them out whenever you want. Watch them. I got videos on pretty much everything. And once again, if you want to learn more about zero-length strings and null, check out my extended cut video for the members. Silver members and up get access to everything. What are you waiting for? Join today. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and 
one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.